Hey guys, so for this video, I'm going to cover a bunch of really useful in-game tricks. I've been making a ton of content videos recently, so I wanted to take a step back and return to my roots. I also wanted to learn this because I pretty much learned all of these tricks after the 1% cup, and I really wish I knew them earlier. I swear I would have placed if I knew them. The strats I'm going to cover will include new box fighting techniques, never before seen exploits, and even some ways to get better loot like purple pumps every single game. Make sure you stick around for that. So without further ado, let's Let's get right on into it. To start us off, let's look at what I believe to be the new meta way to shockwave inside your opponent's box. Alright, so this trick was found by a guy named Jedi2x, he makes a bunch of really good tips and tricks videos, this is probably the best one I found of his. All you do for it is when your opponent is boxed up, get on top of their one by one, build three floors in any direction like this, then with the floor that's in the middle of the two floors, the diagonal one, you're gonna edit the closest tile towards you, so you get this little structure, and finally with your shockwave, aim it right where the little lip is. You see how this wood piece is up? You want to aim where the two of them meet. The important thing to remember though is that as you throw it, you want to basically be off the edge and fall down right as the impulse goes off. I know it's kind of weird to explain, but it works really, really well. Here's what it would look like at full speed. Easy. Kazaki tried to free fire me. <laughs> the timing is really important here because if you go too late like this, you're gonna fly way past it. I mean, it's not too bad this way. And then if you go too early, you're not gonna go into the box. You're gonna end up in front of your opponent's wall like a clown. Oh my gosh! Can't put in the montage, brother! This is what it looks like from your opponent's POV. What is this man doing? Oh my god! I actually tried to turn around, but your opponent has no chance. You literally end up right behind them. I unfortunately do not have any in-game examples of this because it was just discovered, but I'm sure you'll see it in FaZe Martos' next upload. Next two tricks are 300 IQ crash bed exploits that are much safer than the riskier ones I've showed in the past. By now, if you guys do not know the cone or ramp phase with a crash bed, then I honestly don't know what you're doing with your life. The problem with it that you've probably seen Scene from all of Face Martos' highlight videos is that a player with good aim will absolutely destroy you when you're inside their box. We want to avoid all 50 50 shotgun battles if we can. The solution that I showed in my past box fighting video is what Face Martos does. You're gonna jump to the side as you do the phasing trick. That way, you can replace their wall, get some peace control. <laughs> My man ducked at the right moment. What I just showed is a really good and viable way, but anytime you're on top of your opponent's box, you always risk getting edited in. <laughs> and yes, that does apply for the trick I just showed with shockwaves. The even newer solution, I guess solution V2, is what Faze Martos also does. The first of which involves placing a wall above the top of your opponent's box like this, then simply throwing the crash pad right at the wall, the one you built. Oh, yeah! <laughs> Throwing the crash pad at the wall you just built, boom, that will destroy their wall and allow you to get a shot, as well as peace control and to replace the wall. I really like this first way because if you watch Bartas, what he'll do is he'll basically give himself a right hand peek, he will be completely protected from any peace control his opponent can do. He'll throw it, replace the wall, get a nice shot off, or he'll use it like an RPG where he'll basically time his shot for when the wall breaks. Even if your opponent is zero ping and they're holding their wall, you can time it pretty easily. That was low key cleaner than I thought. Oh my gosh, Kazaki stood no chance. Here's your opponent's perspective. <laughs> Kazaki was a little bit confused. Yo, I'm zero ping. That is not fair. Here's the other version, which is very, very similar. You're basically gonna build a ramp right in front of your opponent's wall. We're gonna try to take and or shoot through this one. You're gonna build a wall to your right, edit it into a right hand peak like this and then place another ramp facing that way. It's kind of random, it's really weird, but it's how Martas does it. You're then gonna take your crash pad, aim for just over the top of the wall, so right on the bottom of the cone. As you'll see, it's gonna bounce, hit the stair, break the wall, and that will allow you to either replace it or go for a shot. This is what it should look like full speed, box fighting your opponent, make sure you can't get peace controlled, build this random stuff, aim for the top right, Boom, Mongo Classic, easy highlight reel. You subscribe to It's Jarian. You just love him for teaching you all these amazing tricks. And then also follow Kazaki on Twitter. Oh, uh, I, don't, I don't know about all that. 
here's the legend that I just mentioned before Face Bartos beautifully pulling this trick off in Arena. Moving on, our fourth trick is a really underutilized box fighting edit that I've only seen the top tier EU pros use. At a base level, this edit is really useful when you're inside the same box or your opponent is just under stairs. You guys don't even have to be in the same box. What most people do is they'll edit the stair from top to bottom, usually on the left side, that way they have a right hand peek. But the problem is that as you can see, Kazaki sees it coming. <laughs> And any good player will kill you. <laughs> you were so close to me. The trick which I've only seen top EU players do, these include pros like Hiriachi, Aqua, who I believe made it famous. Instead of from top to bottom on either the left side or right side, they'll edit from the top left to the bottom left. And as they go to complete the edit, they'll move to the left for this angle. <laughs> <laughs> that leaves them with this angle on their opponent where they have a pretty nice shot of them easy body shot and their opponent has absolutely no way to shoot them they are right under the stairs they can only go for the legs <laughs> you can even snipe people i guess from now on do not default to this edit it is a really good edit and you should be making it a lot but if you really want to throw your opponent off go for this top right edit it's so clean and you can reset it so fast. What I also just realized is that with the old edit, which again is not bad, when you reset it after a shot, your opponent can phase through it and use that to their advantage. You do that. Ow! With this new edit though, when you reset it, they're still under it. So they cannot phase through it. That's just something to think about when you go for whichever edit you want. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, this is busted. Fifth trick, we're going back to shockwaves for yet another cheeky way to get inside your opponents one by one. This shockwave strat is for everyone that thinks the first one is way too complicated. Oh, sorry, I just had to do that. <laughs> I will admit the way I'm about to show is much more consistent, however it wastes more mats because you basically build your own one by one on the side of the top of their box like this. You build the ramp, put yourself on the back of it, you can tell this takes a little more time to set up, and then you look straight up, throw the shockwave, that'll drop you right behind your opponent, break through their cone floor, it'll break through everything, and it works every single time. You don't have to worry about timing, you don't have to worry about anything that the other shockwave tricks have to. It is the most consistent by far. All your opponent's gonna be thinking is what the heck did this man, what? Oh, yo, I didn't even see you. All your opponent's gonna be thinking is what the heck is this guy doing building a one by one above me when out of nowhere, <laughs> they're right behind you. <laughs> I'm telling you, this is the most effective and consistent way to shockwave exploit. You just gotta expend a few more mats. What is it? Maybe three more builds in total and a little bit more time, but you get it every single time. It's so good. I learned this from my boy Karyu, shout out to him, but I believe the first person to discover it was a guy named Granwish. Shout out to him as well. Now for the moment you've all been waiting for, the god strat, the guaranteed way to get gold and purple pumps, no it is not landing at Stark. I know that's one of the ways, but it's not this one. The trick I'm talking about is simply fishing, yep you heard that correctly, good old fishing with a harpoon or fishing rod. As I'm sure all of you guys know, Epic removed charged shotguns from the game about a month or two ago. Not only can you no longer get them out of chests or out of floor loot spawns, but you can also no longer get them out of fishing holes. Do you know what that means? The removal of the charged shotgun from the loot pool gives you a much higher chance of getting a spaz, which is a purple or gold pump, from your normal average fishing hole. No joke, you can consistently fish out a spaz from a fishing hole almost every single game. I personally never knew this, you guys probably saw in my 1% video that I really could've used the purple pumps, but for those of you like me that have always tried to prioritize upgrading your pumps, fishing is way better and does not use any mats at all. It's also Papa Jerry and approved. 7th and 8th tricks are the two easiest and most effective ways to rotate in Fortnite chapters. Two. I guess we'll start with the shockwave rotate because this one's way more straightforward and simple. So the standard way that most people rotate with a shockwave is placing a bouncer beneath us on a floor, position yourself where you can combine the two and throw the shockwave. How far did I go? 
80 meters, not too shabby. The reason that I don't really like this method is because if you watched me and Kamali, we were both bouncing back and forth side to side because you can go the complete wrong way. I just went diagonal. There's not a lot of room for error, which is not good. So the much, much better way to do it is to box up. Build yourself a two by one, one by two rather, basically two levels. Place the bouncer on one of the walls in whichever direction that you wanna go. So I wanna go this way. But if I wanted to go this way, say zones over there, I would place it like this. We'll use the original side. What you're gonna do is place a ramp like this, basically blocking you off from actually using the bouncer. It's kind of weird, but trust me, it works. And then finally, with your back up against the ramp, you wanna be at the top of the bottom ramp, right below the top ramp. You're gonna aim the shockwave at the bottom, and that's gonna send you absolutely flying. Oh my gosh. 110 meters, it was consistent, it was easy. You could even do it with a cone. Just gotta place the bouncer. And it's so much faster to set up. Look at that. Don't even get me started if you have teammates. All three of you guys, one guy can be to the side, one guy at the center who throws it, the other guy right here, and all of you guys are gonna go flying and end up in the same exact spot. If you kinda think about it, you're basically shock waving yourself with the ramp, right? That's how you normally would do it. I don't go that far. But what you're adding in is the bouncer, which is just right behind it, and you still get the bouncer effect. So you get both of them, which makes you go so far. I love this trick so, so much. So that one was Shockwave and Bouncer. That should be the new standard. This one, we need a crash pad. Crash pads, where are you? There we go. For this, you need to be one level off the ground. You cannot be on the ground level. Again, you're gonna box up. You don't really need the floor. I'm just gonna edit it like that. But you're gonna edit the floor that you're standing on exactly like this. So edit the bottom right tile. You could technically do both of them so the top right and the bottom right all you want is this little railing i'm gonna do the bottom right you're then gonna put the bouncer on your right wall like this edit your cone to the right because that's the direction you're gonna be going where the bouncer is again that's where you're going to go and you're gonna want to throw the crash pad like this you see how it's positioned the little blue outline it's at a 45 degree angle that's how you want it 45 degree angle oh my gosh <laughs> Almost 100 meters. With a crash pad, that is insane. Because the only way I've seen is this, which does work well. I mean, how far did I go? 70 meters, that's not too shabby. But you gotta ask yourself, why should I go 70 meters when I watch it's Jerrion and I could easily go <laughs> way farther? Holy, 100 meters with a crash pad and a bouncer. This trick is just fun to practice, I'm not gonna lie. I've been doing it for fun. I think that just makes me a nerd. Ninth trick I believe we're on is a pretty useful box fighting strategy that I picked up after watching Resub's recent VOD review. It was a VOD review of VDL by the way. What the trick is and how VDL does it, I'm pretty sure that's how you pronounce his name. He's basically the best EU fighter, or at least he's one of them. And what I saw him do in Resub's VOD review is he was in a 2x1 like this, his opponent was on his right wall, and essentially he made this type of edit, he moved to the right for a right hand peek. Wait, wait. <laughs> And the important part is that as he went for the shot, he immediately built a ramp like that. What this does is it blocks off his opponent from any return fire, and it also lets him establish peace control like that. This way he can reset the edit and go for another right hand peek. Vidiel is good enough where he can hit his shot. And at least from what I've seen, it's one of the most effective ways to just end fights fast, especially in a two by one. Full speed, my opponent's pressuring my wall. I then make the edit, dodge to the left, place that wall. I don't know what Kazaki's doing, but I think he knows his time is near. It's not the most advanced thing in the world, but I feel like it's one of those mongrel tricks or just those pro building techniques that everyone should kind of learn because it's really useful once you're in a two by one. Waiting for the pre-fire like Mitro, miss the shot, get boxed up, and then it's over. Don't do it. No! He's too good. Final trick, trick number 11, which I originally was not gonna include, is one that I'm just not gonna explain. I want you guys to watch, and then I'll come back and talk a little about it. No, 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 no! Oh! 
From what I can tell, I'm pretty sure he did like a backwards ramp exploit into his opponent's box. He kind of looked up and then somehow moved backwards, broke through the wall, and then hit the dude with a 200 pump to the mouth. I honestly don't even know what happened. All I know is that it was sick and that is the perfect way to end the video. Overall guys, those are the 11 tips and tricks, box fighting techniques that I really suggest you learn and master. So if you guys enjoyed the video or if you learned something new, do be sure to drop a like, subscribe to the channel somewhere down here, and to turn on my post notifications. Shout out to everyone on the screen for using code Jarian. I say it every video, but I do truly appreciate you guys. Epic completely redid the item shop, so if you guys are buying skins, let me know and I will shout you out. Also, follow my Twitter and Instagram because you're going to be on there anyways. Otherwise, that's it from me, and I will see you guys in the next one. Later!